Hey everybody, Joshua Snow here, and I've got another tips and tricks video for you. And this week I'm going to show you how I remove halos from horizon lines. Um, now this is something that can come up whether you're blending um, blue hour shots, um, compositing, or even if you're not, this can come up from just everyday average adjustments when you're doing sky selections or adding any sort of contrast, or especially if you're sharpening. And so I'm going to show you how I use the clone tool in Photoshop with some blend modes and how we can get rid of those kind of nasty halos. Um, this is especially uh, important for printing um, because the more contrast you add, the more sharpness you add, uh, it's going to create more of a halo along your horizon line. And that doesn't look very good when you print. Um, I've been going through the images from my night photography masterclass tutorial that I'm working on. And uh, if you've pre-ordered that, thank you very much. If you haven't, please go to wildlightexposures.com and pre-order that now. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll get a coupon code for an extra $5 off that tutorial, and it'll be the cheapest it will ever be. Once it's released on December 5th, it goes up to $59.99, and it will only ever go back to that price when I do a sale on it every once in a while. So let's get right into this video today and hopefully you'll pick up some tips and tricks. All right, everybody, I've got one of my most popular shots, one of my most favorite shots of all time, Interstellar up here on the screen. And I'm going through uh, this image and a couple of other images from my upcoming astrophotography post-processing masterclass coming out on December 5th. And uh, I just, it brought up an interesting, um, thing that i think i tend to take for granted and that is halos now halos can occur from all manner of things um, but i think it's always a good practice to at the very end of your workflow on your master file create a stamp visible layer or a new pixel layer and do this halo removal and so i'm going to create a stamp visible layer command or control alter option shift and e all together create a stamp visible layer. Now, once I've got that stamp visible layer made, I'm going to change the blend mode of that to darken. I'm now going to go and grab my clone tool. And I'm going to set that blend mode to darken as well. Looks like it's already there for me. I'm going to raise my opacity to 100. Now, let me zoom in here to an area that has a small halo. Now, this is a blend, this is a blue hour blend with a stacked sky. And anytime you're doing any sort of blending or compositing, um, you're gonna end up with some sort of little halo. Now, I try really, really hard during the masking process to avoid these halos for that mask to be as precise as possible when blending the images together. Um, but alas, it still happens and it's very easy to fix. And so if we zoom in here, we have a nice little halo that we can get rid of. And the way this works is with these blend modes set to darken, if I were to sample from this area, because that's how the clone tool works, you sample from one area and you apply it to another area. And that is used for fixing all manner of blemishes. But I think everyone knows that. But we're gonna use it today with these blend modes. And how this works is because this is darker than this halo, but lighter than the landscape, when we source from here and we paint over this halo, because that halo is brighter, it's going to replace it with the pixels from the sky, but because the landscape pixels are darker, it's not going to affect those pixels. And watch what happens when we do this. So if I hold alter option and I sample right here above the halo, and then I start to paint over that halo, you'll see those brighter pixels will start to be replaced with the darker pixels, but the already dark pixels are pretty much untouched. Let me zoom in a little further so we can see that a little better. I'll sample from here, and then I'll start fixing that halo, and you'll see those brighter pixels get darker, but it doesn't really darken the already darkened pixels. And so that's how the blend modes work. And it's a really easy way to help get rid of these, these halos that will occur no matter what you're doing. And if you want to say manipulate the color, you can also change your blend mode here to color. 
And because the blend mode of the layer is set to darken, the clone stamp tool is set to color. If we clone up here and then we replace it, you should see that blue color is gonna be changed to the color of the sky. And so this is a good way to help get rid of chromatic aberration if it's a big problem for you on your camera. Um, sometimes, even if you do the uh, profile corrections in Lightroom or Camera Raw, you will still have some sort of haloing um, or chromatic aberration. And so this is how I get rid of any sort of haloing, any sort of chromatic aberration before I print right on my raw file or my master file. So that way everything I do from here, outputting for social media or print uh, is taken care of. And it's not gonna get made worse when I apply some sharpening uh, later on. So I hope you guys found that useful and I'll see you on the next one.